abundance was already there before Peter had that issue financially. Abundance was already there. The fact that the Lord had that money in the fish mouth it shows you how he's the God of provisional miracles. Worry is really foolishness, is ignorance. You lack the knowledge that God already has the knowledge of what you have. Because the reason why God told you not to worry or stress out is because he already thought everything through before you started thinking it through. See, most times you only think stuff through because trouble comes. He already thought it through before the trouble had came five years ago when everything was cool or two years or one year or six months ago, or three months when everything fine. The Lord had already planned out turmoil. And if you look at turmoil, you see the word all in turmoil because there's an anointing. In the disappointing. And you must always remember when you're disappointed, you're still anointed. Now, saints, uh, there's three different ways I want to pit this. Anoint. Anointed. Anointing. I want you to remember it like that. An anoint, anointed, anointing. Because anointed is a past tense. It means that the power has already come to you. Anointing means that now that power that has come to you is at work. Or mean that is it, it is a part of you now. So the power comes, has already come to you uh, at anointed. The power is now working. A part of you is a part of you now as a part of your identity, your image, anointing, but then we have anoint. I want you to see this. Before the foundation of the world, Jesus was the Lamb of God. He was anointed. That's why he the Christ. He's the anointed one. But the anointing is where it is a part of his functionality now. What was given is now being used. It's no longer potential. And that's where he went around doing good. That was the anointing. But then anoint is when he gave the disciples power to go out. Wow. Wow. So, so he was anointed as the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He was the anointing. He went out doing good. He was teaching. He was doing the Beatitudes. Then he went and anointed or, or he went to anoint. And that's where he sent out the disciples. That's where he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And told them to go baptize men. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And make disciples of many nations. So I want you to remember this. You can be anointed. That means the power has already come to you, whether you feel it or not. You have to then step into the anointing. Because now your senses, your awareness that you have it is there. Now the word is quickening you. So you know that it's there. You know your authority, your abilities, your dominion. But then you, you can't stay there. You have to go and anoint. So saints, I want you to see this in Revelation. King Jesus said, go anoint your eyes where I solve. And I looked at what solve meant in the Greek and the Hebrew. It said that ointment. 
So, so, so Saab is really go pit the anointing, the power of God on your eyes. Well, how can I do that? So God was saying that your eyes is going to open up to see how I see only if you anoint your eyes. And so people of God, that means when you are anointing your eyes, you have to stay away from things that will not let your eyes be anointed. That means mindsets, people, conversations. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Since God gave you the power to anoint your eyes, obviously there are things that you're supposed to stay away from. There are people you're supposed to stay away from. That's the reason why God told Adam, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because he knew that once he ate of the tree, something was going to happen to his eyes. The Bible said that his eyes opened up. But see, it was activated by that tree that he partook of. So the way that you anoint things, you have to stay away from anything that keeps that thing from being anointed. So if you want your finances to be anointed, oh my gosh, if you want to anoint your money, you have to stay away from fear. You got to stay away from robbing God. <laughs> you you, you got to stay away from the spirit of the thief. You got to stay away from saving your life. See, I'm showing you for you to anoint something, you have to stay away from something that was keeping it from being anointed in the first place. Wow. 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 If you want your mind to be anointed, you want to anoint your mind. You have to stay away from thoughts that's making your mind weak. What's making your mind depressed? You have to stay away from that. Forgive us of our trespasses. That means I pass what was my safety. I passed what was my security. I passed what was my momentum, my inspiration. I passed it up. If you miss a turn, you're now on a road that you're not familiar with or a road that you was not designated to be on. So if you miss a turn mentally, your mind is somewhere that you was not designated to be on. So there's no strength in that place. So the way that you anoint is you stay away from something or somewhere or someone that was keeping that thing from being anointed. Before Jesus healed the man of blindness. The Bible said that the man came with people. They brought the man to Jesus and, and the man was around people. The word said that before Jesus healed the man's eyes, he took him out of the village away from the people. Why? Because the people was actually stopping his eyes from receiving the anointing. The Lord didn't see them qualified to be in the presence when this man's eyes open up because they were not eye opening spirits. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. My God. <laughs> and daughter, I'm going to piggyback off of you. You see, with Jairus' daughter, he put them out the house because they were not resurrection power agents. So he wasn't going to resurrect Jairus's daughter in the midst of people that didn't have the DNA of res resurrection operating in them. You see that? You see that? So, so that's how you know I'm in the spirit, because if you can throw something at me and I can have a revelation for it, I And so Jesus took the man out of the village because the village, the people were not carrying 
that same atmosphere, anointing grace for the man's eyes to open. The word of God talked about Peter pitting everybody out the room in the book of Acts. I don't know if that lady's name was Dorcas or Dor Dora, the explorer. I don't know what her name was, but she was in the place where she was helping out people and she had died. He pit them all out of the room. And now he raises her from the dead. Tabitha, ta 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 And he pissed them out the room because even though they are crying for this woman that she died, they are not carrying the, the, the power for resurrection for her life. Now, saints, that give you a revelation right there. You don't need, about, you don't need to be around people that's just going to cry for you and sympathize with you. You need people that want to see you resurrected. See, saints, all the people that was with this woman, Tabitha, they wanted her. They loved her, but all they could do is sympathize that she had died. But none of them carried the spirit of resurrection for her life. So the, the thing about it, if you got people that you call your friends and all they do is sympathize with your troubles and sympathize with your issues and they pity you, they are not taking you anywhere. You're stuck with them. When you find a real friend, you'll find yourself being elevated to the next elevator level. You don't want people that you can drop your trash into. You want people that go and reveal to you where the treasure is at. My God, my, my, my God, my God. You don't, woo, my God. You don't need people that you can just drop all your mess into. You need people that have a message. You need people that's, that's not acquainted just with your grief, but they can show you where your gold is. You don't need people that sympathize with your cross. You need people that are leading you to your crown. Because even Jesus didn't focus on his cross. When he focused on the cross, he said, take this cup from me. But when he focused on his crown, it says, let not my will, let your will be done. His crown in Hebrews, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross because that crown was in his face. The joy was the crown and the people that was crucifying him didn't bother him to the degree. He said, Father, forgive them. Because he was not looking at his cross. He was looking at his crown. You don't need people that sympathize with your cross. You need people that lead you to your crown. You don't need people that cry over you, Tabitha, because you died. You need people that are ready to decree a thing so that you can raise up from the dead. There was four days that King Jesus did not let anybody see him go to the place where Lazarus was because he was giving Mary, he was giving the sisters an opportunity to decree a word over Lazarus and none of them did it. Nobody that heard Jesus teaching went and rose Lazarus from the dead. But what did Jesus do? After 72 hours, after 96 hours, now he comes on the scene and finally does it. Let me say this to you. Don't let the God, don't let the God of heaven and earth see you keeping your authority as potential. Now, th think about what I just said there. Don't let the God of heaven and earth see you keeping your authority as potential. Because if it stays in potential, that means that it's only a possibility if you would have, if you would have, if you would have, if you would have. But that potential is supposed to become power. Learn to anoint things. You, you may go through anointed you may go through anointing, but you have to learn how to anoint. Anoint your body. Anoint where you have pain. Anoint where you have sickness. Anoint 
where you have diseases. Anoint where you have poverty, where you have lack, where you have financial difficulties. Jesus did the speaking, not about the things, to the things. He spoke to things because he had moved from anointed. He had moved from anointing and he started to anoint. 